There you go. Okay. Um, just as we promised you guys, we have Davidson Associates, our friends for the last, my God, almost before my time. I've been here 11 years at Dunwoody. They have been helping this project before my time, and I've been here 11 years. So they've been at least 15 years, I would say. Um, Mike Brayback is actually the founder of the ECDM program. He and Guy here, you know Mike. You guys will meet Mike in the spring. So we have Pat Griffiths. Uh, Higgins. Um, Pat Higgins is, I believe, control expert at Davidson Associates, and he will walk you guys through the low voltage control system. So before we start, I want to thank you for the donuts and the milk and all this good stuff. So you're the first. You rock from the get go. <laughs> so it's all yours. <laughs> all right, sounds good. Well, um, so what do you guys know about our sensory sensors as far as any of the past, anything what their original design was, what the original intent was, at all? Well, back in the early 70s is when the first dive country center was kind of designed. And its main intent was actually for security systems. And through the process of taking that technology, upgrading it, and advancing it, we actually got it to a point where we can reliably control lights in uh, open office spaces or in office spaces so that we're making sure to turn off lights for people because we're kind of lazy. We don't like to hit that switch when we walk out the door at the last time of the night. And, um, you know, maximizing that aspect of it and also maximizing the point of um, user ability as far as we're not going to be turning off lights on people when they're actually in the space. All right. The real intent for occupancy sensors when they first came out was actually to use what we call it in the industry now as a vacancy sensor. Their main intent was to turn lights off, not necessarily turn lights on. Well, throughout the course of you know the history and the fact that you know, us as Americans are trying to be a little bit lazy. We kind of got accustomed to the fact that every time we walk into space, we like when the lights automatically come on. Well, there's been now a shift to new energy codes that are coming out that are making these sensors to become vacancy sensors again. So they're only there to detect vacancy. And what that entails is usually the addition of a low voltage switch in most office, open office spaces, or most office spaces. Um, with the addition of that switch, and I got kind of an example one here. With an addition of a low voltage switch, we're able to tell this occupancy sensor, same type of occupancy sensor that's installed in any sort of space, to operate as a vacancy sensor. And when I say vacancy sensor, basically we're causing the system when something enters into that space, we're not going to do anything to the lights. The user has to manually hit the on switch on the button on the wall switch to turn on the lights within the space. And then through the different technologies that are built into the on sensor, is how we keep those lights on. If they leave the space without turning off the light, 10 to 15 minutes later, we usually shut those lights off. So that's the main purpose of what our occupancy centers do. Um, we got a short little video that kind of explains a little bit of the, of the technologies that are in there. Um, kind of goes over the stuff that I just kind of went over with you um, that kind of helps as far as what the knock sensor's main purpose is. And does this computer have audio as well? Uh, it should. Yeah, okay. We can. Um, we have to lock hands. Okay. The media has to be plugged in this. Okay. Okay, I think that should. Uh, okay. Turn that one on, and I think we can turn this one on until you should. Okay. That sucks. There we go. Things are just a little. Thank you. 
Before this part of this voice says, whoever sees the body is the self. Why do we say that such arguments as such is how they are ready to be in the process? They are both functional and attractive, but also the two things in the world. As we were talking, or as I mentioned, you know, the originally the original intent was designed for security systems. Um, we've gone beyond that with the new energy codes and everything else that is available. The video talks mostly about sensors such product because it's the product that they actually need to represent. Um, there is one technology that is used in all occupancy sensors, and that's that passive infrared technology. And what it is, is it's looking for an infrared heat signature that everybody has. And what it's actually, what the sensor is actually detecting is when a person moves between those beams that shoot out from the sensor itself. There's two ways that we can get dual technology sensors. And what that means is we end up putting not only passive infrared into the sensor, but we also end up putting in ultrasonic or microphonics built into the sensor. Um, all other manufacturers besides Sensor Switch use the technology of uh, the uh, ultrasonic technology. And what that is is the highest frequency that's above our, above our noise or what we can hear is sent out to different space and it listens to the response back. If there is a difference in time, that's how it determines if somebody's within that space or if there's an occupant within that space. Um, sensor Switch's technology uses a microphone that's actually embedded in the sensor itself and actually hearing for information, hearing for noise that registers within our vocal patterns as far as our, our speech. Um, it will filter out the noise floor such as constant hum, like a 60 hertz cycle or fan noise, HVAC noise. The other difference between ultrasonic and microphonics is that ultrasonic technology, you have to be careful where you place your sensors. You can't place them right next to HVAC vents. They recommend a distance of maybe 500 feet away from it. Sensor switches, technology with the microphones, you don't have to worry about that as much. Um, this is not to say that the other technologies are 
you know, the ultrasonic technology is effective in any way. It's just, it's a little bit different. There is some things that the ultrasonic technology excels at versus our microphones, such as areas that are next to airports where you have planes coming in, or at an airport where you have private offices. You constantly get planes firing up, they'll hear that noise and detect it as it being somebody within that space. My reason for that is just because of the fact that it's listening to sharp startup sounds and stop sounds. It will hear that plane noise, but what happens is you get extended time on, extended time on for the sensors themselves. Any questions on that at all? Okay. The different types of sensors that we use within the, within the field are in usually three different types. Right? You're going to have a wall switch style like this, and this would replace any toggle switch, makes it really easy for a contractor to install and retrofit applications. However, you are limited. We usually only use the wall switch style in an area that's about 12 by 12. Once we start to get in a space that's larger than that, the sensor itself can no longer pick up the area that you're trying to fit in. Um, me, personally, I don't use them a whole lot in small private offices. And the reason for that is, is that if your back is turned to this, remember that passive infrared, that's one of the technologies it uses. If your back is turned to this and you're typing on a keyboard, it will no longer see your hand movement. That can be a problem. The other thing is, is that a lot of people tend to put, you know, coat wraps and stuff right next to their door when they walk in. Well, that's where your wall switch is going to be. Somebody comes in and hangs up their coat, so that also will block the sensor as well. So that's one of the things, one of the downfalls to this. Although they are great, they are economical, very easy for a contractor to kind of retrofit application as far as he pulls out the wall switch, puts this device in, he's now compliant with the new energy codes, so you can continue on and keep going. If you want to step above that, we go to our ceiling pump sensors, and I can pass it around here too. We go to our ceiling pump sensors. The nice thing about these is that they have 360 degree coverage. Generally, you can find a spot anywhere in the ceiling to place them. Um, there is two different lens types that we use. One of them has a standard range coverage of about a 12 foot radius. The other version that we have has an extended range coverage of about a 30 foot radius. And with these devices, you know, if we need more coverage, we just continue to add another sensor along the way. This particular one is a low voltage unit. So what that means is that in order to turn on and off the lights, you're going to need another device called a power pack. What this power pack does is it will actually switch the line of the load using the um, line voltage wire coming off of it. And then you'll have a couple of wires coming out. That connect using low voltage cabling to your occupancy sensor head. Now we do have the ability to combine these two units into one device. The only problem with that is, is that when a contractor goes to install them, they now have to run conduit and put in a box and everything else for every one of these one of these sensors that I have. The other downfall is to this is that when we do that, these devices are only rated to handle 800 watts. So unfortunately, you can't switch a full circuit using one of these devices if they're combined in a line voltage application. If you have it in a large coverage area, you know, an area with a really large open office like you're showing in your project, we can link multiple low voltage units together. They get wired together between three conductors. That is low voltage, so they can just run that around, does not have to be in conduit. And that way there, when the space is occupied, all sensors detect the vacancy, meaning there's nobody else in that space. When all sensors time out, then they'll turn off the power pack. There's also a, uh, what we call our corner mount application. This is a wide view sensor. It is designed to, this particular one is a low voltage unit. It's designed to actually fit 
right inside the corner in this classroom. Just like that. This application actually works really well in schools. Um, generally, we recommend them in spaces that run about 50 by 30 when you have classroom size. Um, we have success in our own personal office where we have a drum covering a space that's roughly 36 by 34 and provides really nice coverage for the area. These are available in the dual technology center and also past infrared only. So there is the ability to hear sound and also look for motion as well. So. Um, let's see what else do I have. This is that the mobile voltage switch that I was talking about where we can convert those voltage sensors, same amount of sensors with a quantum amount can be into a vacancy sensor. Using the additional wires here, basically what we do is we make it so the sensor doesn't trigger the power pack automatically. The user has to make a paper wall switch. When we want to be close, especially with the last year, the 2013 one, that's going to be adopted. That was supposed to be adopted here in October, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, they want Every space that has an occupancy sensor to operate as a vacancy sensor. In which case, we're going to be seeing a lot more of these mobile voltage switches and they'll be used in a lot more applications. So, that particular one has dimmy controls on it as well. Um, it's another way that we can incorporate zero to 10 volt dimming wires into the system that we generate with our occupancy sensors. Taking a look at your guys' plan here, um, let's take a look here. Where would I find that, your project here? <laughs> there you go, right here. And then if we can zoom in on that office space that we were looking at before. We're going to go to just taking this time here. Okay. There you go. Flow power. There you go. I think I went to the wrong one. I'll go up a little bit here. That's what happened in. I think the recording is slowing it down. Oh. There you go. Okay. That'll happen. Okay, there's a lot of resources. There you go. Where do you want? Lovely. Come on. Oh, we went to 3D view. Sorry for that. You can continue here. That's not I think. Grace, the only yeah. other thing I was going to ask is do you guys have any questions so far as far as the applications with the sensor that you were going to do? Well, I was wondering uh, is there really an the issue with the, the ultrasound technology in different places where they have like dog or cat or something? Is it the high frequency sound? Um, it's actually up around like, I want to say it's uh, in the areas of around 50. Thousand hertz. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the audio range of you know, canine or you know, feline is. You know, what you're talking about. No, I just, yeah, I just, I guess, if they hear stuff that's like super high, it's like, yeah, I, I guess I haven't heard of it as being an issue. I'm assuming they, they put that above their, their frequency. However, uh, one thing to keep in mind is that there is some, uh, not necessarily smart board, but there are some other manufacturers of display boards like that. It's going to be run into issues with the uh, ultrasonic technology and interfering with the frequencies that they use as far as for the coloring of the different colors on the board itself. Um, it, it's more of a, it, it doesn't necessarily interfere with that, but it's more of a, the sound that puts out will affect your sensors and it will get extended on time quickly. So, 
and then there was a, a unique one to try to troubleshoot. Um, it actually took them about six months before we figured out what's going on with that space. The other thing, the other options that we had is um, I was looking for air electrical room. So let me just kind of pull that up. Um, one of the areas, it's kind of one of the areas where, according to the National Electric Code, they really don't want any sort of people located within those spaces. In fact, they uh, specifically state that occupancy sensors are kind of against code in those areas. Um, one way to still get some automatic control in that area is to do, give them a device called a time switch. And basically, this is a digital version of the old rotary switches that you used to have for the, uh, the 15 minute timers. Um, we've used these in electrical closets quite well, and actually, pretty regularly in most engineers, we tend to accept it, and it has become somewhat of a standard practice in our area. Um, so, it's just another kind of device to kind of keep in mind. You know, in areas where you might not want to use an occupancy sensor, you don't have any. I'm just frozen over. So that's the that's the area here. That okay. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the electrical room. So I noticed when uh, we first when we first zoomed in on it, you had a regular power switch in there. You could probably swap that out to a time switch, and it would probably be accepted. So um, as far as uh, taking a look at your your uh, room here, as far as the room that you guys are looking to have the, uh, I'm assuming it's still. Still, yeah, still, still, still kind of frozen, yeah. still cooking. Okay. Um, as far as taking a look at that room there, that I wanted to kind of view it and get your guys' opinions, start to like think might be a good solution for those areas. Um, you know, it looks like we've kind of got it, got it ready to go here. It's not as bad as I think when you <clears throat> when you ran the video. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I was recording. Yeah. It doesn't like I don't know all it doesn't <laughs> like to record videos. Yeah. So it it uh, okay. if I can uh, get rid of my recording, probably will slow it down. Okay. Get it here, so. um. Zoom, focus, focus here, focus. Come on, buddy. That's up for your computer a little bit, huh? Yeah. Just uh, cooking a lot, of, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Which one? You want the computer room? The, um, the one office that you guys are putting on sensors in. Yeah. You want to make a couple, mm -hmm. a couple of recommendations? Yeah. Um, as far as that goes. So. Oh. What are you doing there? Okay. So that's, that's the area here, right? Okay. Yep. So if you... Get you over there. <laughs> See that? Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to work for the rest of the time. Yeah. Don't want to get over there. Can zoom it. Turn over there. Well, the other application that you guys were looking at was uh, kind of these open office spaces, and it looked like you guys were looking to do window panel control based for those areas there. Um, in our experience, relay panel in an open office is a fantastic operation. And it works very, very well. Um, we've had some success using occupancy sensors in open office spaces. The problem there is, is that generally in open office spaces, there's usually a time based schedule that you know, most people work from 8 to 5. You know, they're not coming in generally outside of those hours to use that space. 
um, giving them the ability for mobile to switches that you guys are showing there. That's a fantastic way for them to override that relay panel system when they can come in those after hours times. Um, through programming, we can set that device up so it will give them a two hour pin warning as far as somebody comes in outside of those business hours and go out and hit the switch. That switch will turn on those lights for two hours. At the end of two hours, we give them a blank warning. Let them know that they got to get up, hit that relay switch again. Once they do that, it extends that time out to another two hours. In our experience for an open office space, that's you know one of the best and the cheapest ways to cover those areas. The relay panel. Um, are you guys going to create a load schedule along with that? I'm assuming as far as for that relay panel. Correct. We will have a relay panel schedule that assigns a circuit to a relay to a means of to the system. Yep. Okay. It's coming. Fantastic. Fantastic. Um, the other application that you can use with that relay panel is that it doesn't necessarily have to control just the exterior spaces. Um, I noticed that you guys are looking at the, the exterior spaces as well, putting them in like a astronomical time clock on the last for the yep. parking lot and the site lighting. Um, that is actually a really great application as well, where we can use that same time clock that you're using for the interior of the space in the relay panel. We can put those loads onto that relay panel as well, and use the time clock within that relay panel system to control those loads. Makes it nice and neat because it's one system for both interior and exterior. It will automatically adjust for daylight savings time as well. And also adjust for the astronomical time block, such as you know, sunrise and sunset as that changes throughout the year. So we can definitely do that. Um, let's see, what other spaces? So we covered the electrical room, we covered open offices. We have bathrooms here that we put occupant sensors okay. in the bathroom. Okay. We have mechanical room, we have shipping area here. Okay. I think we put occupants, I can't remember, occupancy here. Okay. In those mm -hmm. bathrooms, um, I don't know if there was ever a single stall or were they multiple, multiple, multiple stall. Okay. In those areas, there you'll probably have you know the stall dividers within there. At that point, the occupancy sensor doesn't have the ability with the passive infrared to see through those stalls because it's not a site element. So definitely in those areas, you definitely want to use some sort of dual technology sensor. Whether it's a passive infrared with ultrasonic or passive infrared with microphonics, either one will actually work very well within that space. Um, there are some manufacturers out there that will produce a ultrasonic technology sensor only, in which case it only has that high pitch frequency that it's sending out and listening for the response back. Um, that can also work in those applications as well. We prefer to use a dual technology type just because it's a little more robust to be able to detect people as soon as they walk into that space. Um, is your uh, electrical room that we're talking about here? Okay. The mechanical panel? Yeah, yeah it looks like uh, you got a, just a wall switch located wall right switch there. Here. Okay. Yeah. And like Pat has said, the mechanical electrical room, especially in the electrical room, the MEC source would require you to have a manual override for any auto control in your room. So you can have an occupancy sensor, and room you have to manually override it. So if somebody's working on electrical equipment, they can go put it on an on, mm -hmm. and override the occupancy sensor, then you need the code. So yeah. that's why a lot of engineers prefer to have a switch there, yeah. or if you want to save energy, you still have, like you said, occupancy sensor, but you can manually override it. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you put it on, it would not, the occupancy sensor would not work. Yep. But I'm sure you guys are capable of doing that. Yeah, we are, but we, uh, we generally end up using, using the time switch in that application just because of the fact that mm -hmm. I don't want to be responsible for that, like ever turning off on somebody. Yep. Um, application like that, you know, electrical closet, and also the other applications where people are using heavy machinery, you know, cutting saws, table saws, yep. stuff like that. I don't want, I like my digits. I don't want to be responsible for cutting off somebody else's it for yeah, whatever yeah. reason my lighting controls turn off on them. Yeah. Um, we've had some engineers that on their plans they specified it that way. And when we actually sent it out to the factory for the factory layout, 
the fact that we're going to actually put a note down there saying, you know, this is a safety concern. We recommend the sensors be pulled out of these areas due to you know, the chances of the dangers. Um, so there is information like that. And most of your uh, offices down here, um, I would probably recommend using some sort of ceiling mount sensor, probably uh, you know standard protection range ceiling mount sensor. Um, in our particular area, most of the sensors that we use are going to be low voltage sensors, so we'll supply them with the power pack. Um, areas where that might not be beneficial might be areas where you have a hard pack ceiling, such as uh, sheetrock ceiling in your bathrooms. You know, um, you don't always have access to you know, up above them to replace the power pack if you ever need to. Sometimes that's where a low a line voltage sensor might be helpful. We do specify um, a dimming system, I believe, in this office right here. Okay. That will interface with the uh, low voltage control panel here. So somehow locally okay. located dimming system in that office. Okay. Um, do you know what the type of ballast you're using? For we have system? three types of fixture. We have um, these are, what do you say, T5, I believe, T5 uh, suspended fixtures. So T5. And we have um, compact fluorescent in this side, I think. Okay. And we have incandescent fluorescent in this side. So three types of fixtures controlled from them, this dimming system. Okay. Um, as far as the, uh, the dimming system goes, in a situation like this, actually what I would do and what, what actually is really beneficial is be put an occupancy sensor in here along with the dimming system. There's no real reason to have a tie back into your lighting control panel. Just keep it as a separate system. Now, the reason why I, I suggest doing that is one, it's a little more cost effective. Um, there is ways that we can integrate them through like a building management software or building management system. It, it can be done. And there is some manufacturers out there that will provide a lighting control system that will do the type of dimming that you're looking for as far as the incandescent and the uh, compact fluorescent and also the T5. Um, but those systems are generally a little bit more, um, as far as a more modern field of those systems are. Granted, they do exist. There, there's absolutely no reason why you can't do that. Um, so there, there are some options there as well. As far as, uh, you know, for this area, uh, one manufacturer that does a really nice job is uh, Crestcom Lighting Controls. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that line at all. Um, they're actually really big in the AV industry for about 20 years, and then they decided, you know, we just don't want to control the AV equipment in our room. Let's start taking over the lighting controls. They did that for a while. Now they're actually going from there and expanding into building wide systems. Um, it's another line that we represent. The other one that uh, would be really well fitted for that area would be a uh, Lutron lighting control system. The Lutron graphic eye. I don't know if you guys have that design mm -hmm. so, um, Generally, in most in instances in commercial applications, your, in your incandescent bulb is going to work. Um, I very rarely see it on specs anymore on fixture schedules. The general uh, Dimming type, as far as the dimming ballast that we use now, is typically that zero candle dimming. Okay, I don't know if I explained this one is a wall wash light. Okay. So both of these are the incandescent on this side, and the fluorescent here are wall wash. So the okay. specification is just do a wall wash light with these two. Yep. yep. So okay. not general lighting. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, wall wash applications, we do still see some incandescent lights. Yeah. Um, and, and with the, uh, the dimming, the, the reason why the, uh, I kind of look at keeping that area separate is dimming incandescent lights is kind of expensive nowadays, um, especially with the advances in the LED technology. Um, but zero to 10 volt dimming is kind of what the industry is standardizing on. And uh, across the board, it makes it real easy for most um, manufacturers and also engineers to get everybody specified to where dimming controls will actually be able to work with the the lights, the fixtures that are being installed. So, okay. Any other points of your aspects or your 
project that you guys want to discuss on other areas? No? All right. That's, that's basically the project. We have the lighting right? the outside light. Mm -hmm. Anything else you um, want well, to say? The, uh, the other, the next step as far as going from individual control zones with occupancy sensors is there's a new product out on the, lot, out on the market now. And it's called, uh, basically what we do is we take these, all the ox sensors that are, that are passed around, they're considered analog devices, meaning they operate on uh, you know the basis of a analog signal as far as they're 12 volts on, 12 volts off, that's how we know people are in there. Um, but we've actually gone into the digital world now. So we got rid of the 18 gray wire that's actually running between all the sensors and the power packs, and we've actually gone to Cat5. And the reason for that is, is that we actually put some more intelligence into those those occupancy sensors, those power packs, and those switches. Um, Makes things a little bit easier for the contractor to install. And I've got a short video that we can probably go on that called, our product along with that is called Pen Light. Watt Stopper makes another product called uh, Digital Light Lighting Management. They're very similar as far as what they can do with their capabilities, but it's really taken that standalone occupancy sensor with a power pack going up to that next level where we start getting into changing the way how a sensor will operate throughout the day, such as security guard walks in. Does his rounds in the middle of the night? We don't need the crazy to have those lights time on after 10 minutes. Let's take that time out, adjust it down to 30 seconds during that time frame. Next time somebody comes in in the morning, let's bump it back up to 10 minutes for their, for their standard office to open for business hours. Um, I'm gonna, I think uh, I need to stop that one, otherwise, not okay. be able to do it. All right. It's just freezing. It doesn't work with the videos. Okay. So a quick video on the yeah. sensors, so be on that. So. Wow. Frozen, huh? There you go. Would we be able to I'm gonna have to